We are just outside Denver, Colorado at Dick's Sporting Goods Park. Jill Ellis, the U.S. Women's National Team continuing their preparation for the next World Cup in 2019. Tonight, the opponent, the Ferns, number 19 ranked in the world, taking on the U.S. It's all coming up next in front of a sold-out crowd. Excitement in the air here in Commerce City, Colorado, as tonight the United States getting set to take on New Zealand. This is Dick's Sporting Goods Park, and the U.S. continuing to prepare for the World Cup in 2019. Welcome in, everybody. I'm Glenn Davis. Alongside me, former U.S. Women's National Team midfielder. She's a two-time gold medalist, World Cup winner, Julie Foudy. All right, so it's been an interesting year. The U.S. has hosted two tournaments. The She Believes Tournament did not win it. The Tournament of Nations did not win it. We are 18 months away from World Cup qualifying for France 2019. Where is this team sitting, and is it going according to plan for Jill Ellis? Do not panic yet, although there are a a lot of people who are panicking and here's two good reasons why not to panic one this has been an experimentation phase as they should be doing they should be looking at players they're two years out from a world cup so they've been doing that and the second thing is is outside of the two russia games this year the u.s has played all teams in the top 11 of the world and so usually in post-olympic years it's a lighter year this has been a tough year for them but it definitely needs to get better all right, let's take a look at the U.S. timeline here in 2017. And, and the key number there with 7-3-0, and zero, of course, is the three losses. This is only the third time in the history of the program where the U.S. team has lost three times at home. To put that in context, it took 12 years for them to only lose one game in the last 12 years. And she's looked at new players. We talked about that. But really, 2017, the big issue has been getting goals. They just haven't been scoring. And when you look at that Tournament of Nations game, and this is my Continental Tire Analyst Corner, when you look at that game, right, they had just lost Australia, they're coming off that, and then they go down 2-1, 3-1 against Brazil, and you're thinking, wow, this would be the first time in the history of the program they've lost four home games in a calendar year. But then, <laughs> you wouldn't have expected it, in the 80th minute, Kristen Press starts the rally, and then Rapino with the equalizer, and then in the 89th ninth minute Julie Ertz gets the goal that sends him over the top and what a turnaround that was because as I said they were on the brink of a historic record they did not want with four home losses. Players taking the field the preparation for the big picture continues today the U.S. getting set to take on New Zealand when we come back we'll show you how both the coaches set up their teams. Hello, Discover Card. Hi, can you tell me about these new social security alerts I keep hearing about? Uh, sure, just sign up online. Then we'll alert you if we find your social security number on any one of thousands of risky websites. Wow, that's cool. How much is it? Oh, it's free if you have a Discover Card. I like free. <laughs> yeah, we just want you to be in the know. Oh, hey, sushi. Oh, I smell it. <laughs> You're making me. <laughs> yeah, being in the know is a good thing. Know if your social security number is found on risky sites. Free from Discover. This is a story about mail and packages, and it's also a story about people. And while we make more e-commerce deliveries to homes than anyone else in the country, we never forget that your business is our business. The United States Postal Service, priority. Hopefully I make another 100. I don't know if that'll happen, but if it does, I mean, I'd like to, um, I'd like to win another World Cup and another Olympics. It's always my goal is just win the world tournaments with this team. 36th U.S. Women's National Team player to earn 100 caps or more. Kelly O'Hara and Julie, what a moment for her in a stellar career. Yeah, I had a great chat with her yesterday about that moment and her career and just so wonderful to see. Take you to Jill Ellis and the experimentation uh, keeps moving on here. 51 years of age, led the U.S. The World Cup glory in 2015. Here's how Jill Ellis will set it up here tonight for the United States. Going with that 4-3-3 again as she did against the last Tournament of Nation game in Japan. 
And Julie Ertz in particular, check her out in that holding central midfield position. A lot of U.S. fans familiar with her at that center back position, but she's been playing that position all year with the Red Stars and doing quite well, as you can see. Tony Readings, 41 years old, took over for John Herdman in 2011. Let's take a look how the football ferns rank number 19 in the world. Line it up. And that's in the 4-4-2 and 3 that will be familiar. Rebecca with the Seattle Rain, Stott, Bowen, who of course plays for FC Kansas City, and up top, Rosie White, who plows her trade with the Boston Breakers. Three NWSL players today on the field for New Zealand. Game on in Commerce City, the U.S. in white. New Zealand in the black. Your referee is Katja Korleva. Now, uh, U.S. expected, as Jill Ellis told us yesterday, to come out pressing and pressing high here, Julia. Yeah, and, and as we were talking about in the open, they want to get off on the right foot. They had that 3-1 where they're down 3-1 against Brazil in the 70th minute, and they had that great turnaround, and they ended on a high note. But when you look at those two huge tournament losses where they couldn't capture the She Believes Cups or the Tournament of Nations, this is a team that prides itself on winning everything. And so this is a fired up group for sure. Good look at Erin uh, Naylor there tonight earning her 49th cap. Plays in France. She played at Sky Blue as well. This New Zealand team under Tony Readings had uh, quite the trip to get here, obviously. Uh, coming from Europe, a lot of the players coming from New Zealand. They only arrived here on Tuesday. They're playing here at altitude and they have not played since the Cyprus Cup. So. It is a big in challenge March. here tonight. Yeah, in March. <laughs> and that's the only time they've played since the Olympics. It's time to go direct over the top where number 17 is Hannah Wilkinson, who has had some success against the United States. Scored three goals against them in friendlies and played at the University of Tennessee. It's the first match between these two teams since the U.S. 2-0 win at the Rio Olympics. Sauerbrunn will switch it. Taylor Smith now, who's getting another look here tonight in that right back position. And as we've seen, that outside back position has been like a revolving door for this national team. Nice combination play here, switch a play now. It's helped on that wide, here's Rapino now. She'll whip across into the near post and Diving to steer that array was the talented Allie Riley. Uh, Megan Rapino has been in great form, both with the national team and in the NWSL. And a Megan Rapino, who, by the way, after that Japan game, went and got a little, you know, surgery done on her knee. And she's like, yeah, that's fine. <laughs> Three weeks off, back in playing. Rapino plays for Seattle off the corner towards the near post. Julie Ertz, we spoke with her yesterday talking about her role, role in midfield now as sort of a destroyer in front of two center backs, seems to be relishing it quite a lot. Pino again now. Again to the near post, skips through the box. And the U.S. will maintain possession here with Taylor Smith. Smith now, knifing inside. And landing to a couple of New Zealand defenders. It'll be a goal kick. And, and Smith is a former forward at UCLA and is very comfortable attacking. And then when she got to Carolina, has been playing in that outside back position. I think a little prodding from Jill Ellis to, to Coach Riley. If, hey, I could, I'd love to see her in that outside back position. Very similar to the trajectory of Kelly O'Hara actually, who's on that other side for the U.S. tonight in that outside back position. Herman Award winner and at Stanford with all her goals, scoring as a forward, and now an outside back. Oh, nice uh, to play out of pressure from Haran. Here's O'Hara now, honored with the 100th cap here tonight. Nice ceremony before the game here, put on by U.S. Soccer. Doc Knopper, one of her strengths is her distribution with the ball with her feet. Can Rapino get there? Just can't. It'll be a throw into New Zealand here in the fifth minute. They come out of Oceania and have been ranked as high as number 16 in the world. They are the current champions of Oceania. 
States still holding on to that number one ranking. Broken up by Sauerbrunn. Good look at Tony Readings. He's the under 20 national team coach of New Zealand. He spoke at length with us about some of the challenges they had to not use them as excuses, but also spoke about some new programs that we'll talk about a little bit later in the show as to how they're trying to tackle and compete with the rest of the world. Beautiful switch of play from Haran. Smith. Mules. Smith again, nice little takeover over there. She's going to get a decent cross in. Haran was in there, easily collected by Naylor. And a good early look at the beauty of what Lindsay Horan can do in that high inside kind of playmaking position, that number 10 position, wearing the number nine, getting in that hole of the number 10, though. And, and you saw her in a tight space. She can clean it. She switches it quickly, and boom, they're in on the other side. And already in this first six minutes for the U.S., just a better speed of play, a, a better urgency and bite to the game. Wilkinson will flick it on. There's nobody there. It's cleared by Sauerbrunn. Of course, Lindsey Horan from nearby Golden, Colorado. Big night for her. A lot of friends and family in attendance here. Mallory Pugh from Highland Ranch. <laughs> we, saw, we saw both of them yesterday at the field and said, how's it with Lindsey? And, and, and there's her and parents in the stands and talked to both her and Pugh and said, how is it to be home? And they both had like grins from ear to ear. <laughs> so great. Lindsay, is your mom cooking you any home home cooked meals? No. <laughs> Sorry, mom. Yeah, I said I love your mom then, because I don't either. They both played for very successful local youth clubs, the Colorado Rush and Real Colorado. There's O'Hara, Rapino, very tight area here. Can the US get out of this? Once one back by Rosie White. To Wilkinson and stepping in nicely there was Julie Ertz. He hits an angled ball. Is Pew going to get there first? No. Off her line is Naylor. A little bit more angle on that, and now where Pew may have been in. Ertz initiating that attack with the long diagonal ball. And great recognition to know that's on. I mean, the idea is there. Pew, it's a nice combination play. Can Smith get there? Turn it back. It was out of play anyway. Back to a goal kick. Let's take a look at that diagonal ball. And Ertz knows we're going to press this. And look at this. I mean, this is on, but credit to Naylor, who says courageously, I'm coming to the top of the box for that. So I know there's a lot of goalkeepers when they see the pace of Pew who retreat quickly. Julie Ernst, what a World Cup she had as a center back in 2015 when the U.S. won it under Jill Ellis. And by the way, Carly Lloyd out with an angle, ankle injury, so not available here tonight. U.S. trying to get there. She has logged tons of minutes for both club and country. Pew has beaten one. Tried to pick out Morgan and uh, getting in there aggressively, breaking it up with New Zealand and Mallory Pugh. And that's one of the, the beauties of Pugh's speed and her confidence at, at such a young age is that she wants to take on. And Jill Ellis spoke of that yesterday to us, saying, I tell them I want you beating lines. I want you getting in behind defenses on the dribble with a pass penetrating. But that's something they want wide and high often tonight against New Zealand. Turned 19 in April, already has 26 caps, scored last weekend in the NWSL for the Washington Spirit. And like Lindsey Horan, bypassed the college game to go directly to the pro game. And the importance of the NWSL can't be understated. Oh, no question. And, and you're, you're getting consistent games. I mean, that was the challenge in those non-league years. You just couldn't build a pool as well. If you fell outside of the top 25, you weren't getting any games. Good work from Horan. 
Here's Kelly O'Hara now in full flight. Looking for options here. Hesitates. Stop and go. Beats the player. Rapino now overlapping. It's left by Horan. Still Rapino. He gets hacked down. It'll be a free kick for the U.S. at a favorable angle here. Ten minutes in. And an aggressive run by Kelly O'Hara. Trying to get in behind. Pino making the decision that instead she drew three players out wide. I'm going to go inside and draws the foul in a dangerous area for the United States. Megan Rapino stands over it. She's played two NWSL matches since that surgery that Julie mentioned. Currently is tied for second in the NWSL for goal scored. Rapino delivers. Swept by Alex Morgan and over the top and just landing on top of the net from Ertz, who uh, tries to spectacular. <laughs> She is known to score on set pieces, that Julia Ertz, and this one, typically with her head. Why not? Almost gets that on frame. And this is the thing about Julia Ertz, and you see her reaction to that, <laughs> is she brings this great energy. Besides her grit, when she's on the field, there's a clear boost. I mean, we saw it in that Japan game. We saw it in the Tournament of Nations when she came off the bench as a sub. She even said yesterday, I, I, I actually, clearly I don't want our team being down goals, but I actually loved that when I got into that Brazil game, we were down and I had to fight it out and grit it out. And who doesn't want a player like that coming in? Got the game winner in that spectacular comeback in the 4-3 to three victory over Brazil. And we spoke with her yesterday, and boy, she had energy then too. Very effervescent, very positive. Wilkinson trying to get turned. We'll lay it off. We'll get it back. A nice idea there with some combination play alongside Betsy Hassett, who tonight Hassett earning her 100th appearance for New Zealand. Caught in possession. Rosie White, Hassett. You'll hear those names a lot here tonight. Longo helped it on now. It's the most extended possession that New Zealand has had in the U.S. half of the field. It's played wide by Yallop. Kirsty Yallop now plays in Norway. Pass it now, trying to get a crossover. Does come towards the top of the box. And Horan's back there to win it comfortably for the U.S. Pew. Trying to break out here is Alex Morgan. Wonderful movement from Morgan. Morgan, it's on to Rapino if she sees her. She has found Rapino and just missing connecting there. Unbelievable along the sideline though from Alex Morgan. She is in great form right now. Playing with such confidence. Gets by her, gets caught up, gets by her again with her pace. I think it was on just a little bit earlier there because then she gets caught up and has to make an on -bal off balance pass. But the idea again is right for the United States. Morgan has been outstanding for Orlando. All 10 NWSL teams are represented here. She's got nine goals in nine games. And this time she'll get called for the foul. So important, though, to get a healthy Alex Morgan, Julie. Yeah, and, and that's coming off. Remember, she was on an eight-game goalless streak uh, and was anxious to get that monkey off her back. And it took her until... Japan, I believe, that last game in the Tournament of Nations. And then after that, she went, you know, nine goals in 11 games, nine in the last nine for Orlando. She was voted the player of the month in the NWSL in August. Morgan now 28 years of age tonight in her 129th appearance for the United States. to Becky Sauerbrunn. Switch of play now to Abby Dalcopper of the North Carolina Courage who sit at the top of the NWSL standings. 
Smith with that explosiveness. Nice ball to the feet of Morgan now. Pugh trying to make a run in front of her. It's Morgan now. Horan will help it on. Good combination play here from the U.S. Rapino now. Can she get to the end line? She does tackle the way. It'll be a corner for the U.S. Nice ball movement here from the United States. Last touch by Percival. Great defense by Percival there. But as you said, Glenn, good rhythm, good movement. Now they want the payoff. Zonal set up here defensively for New Zealand, punched out by Naylor. Flip to the back post by O'Hara, swept in at the near post. Spectacular goal. The United States go up 1-0. Julie Ertz has scored again. She may be liking this midfield thing. <laughs> and Kelly O'Hara does the right thing here, puts it back in play, and Haran keeping it alive on that back post, just knocking it down. And what a good read by Ertz to beat her player into that position. She starts that run before it even got to Haran to get into position. And a nice finish. She made that look easy. Those balls bouncing coming up are easy to throw over the top of that bar. 52nd appearance tonight, her 10th international goal. And the U.S. get that important first game's goal. Here's O'Hara. Sauerbrunn, who as always just goes about her business so effectively. Smith. And they are flying here. Mallory Pugh's going to get there first. She will square it back towards the penalty spot. New Zealand recovers well. And this is Allie Riley now. The top towards Wilkinson, the offside flag is up. Sunday, an important three points on the line for the New York Red Bulls. Bradley Wright Phillips and company lead New York against the Union at Red Bull Arena. Coverage will kick off at 1 p.m. Eastern on ESPN and on the ESPN app. It's getting that time now in Major League Soccer. Six, seven games to go here, and it is tight in both conferences, jockeying for playoff positions. Burks coming out of the middle to break it up from Hassett. Hassett has had uh, quite a sojourn. Played at Manchester City, word of Berta Bremen. And currently playing at Reykjavik in Iceland. So, you know, you got players that are based in New Zealand in an amateur league, and then you've got these pros yeah. that are sprinkled out throughout Europe and four players in the NWSL. So it's quite the mixture for New Zealand. And it's a hard balance because you're never getting them all together because they're all spread out around the world and they're all on different seasons and times and talking to coach readings yesterday about the challenge because you want them of course playing in these overseas leagues but he said this is really outside of the Cyprus Cup the only time we've been together for the last year plus. First of a long diagonal ball there's a foul committed here. Rosie White with a bit of a shove there to Taylor Smith but Rosie White has been busy up front so far. Here's another look at it. Clear shove in the back there. Rosie White has four goals and assists for the Boston Breakers. Spent a pair of seasons at Liverpool Ladies in England. Yeah, it's not like it's an easy flight to New Zealand either. It's tough to get people to come down there and want to play you. Tony Reedy's mentioning that they try to play Australia pretty frequently. And then, you know, when they, when they haven't been making it to the knockout rounds in the last World Cup and Olympics, their funding dries up from the government, and they said they just don't have the funding to pull it together, and, and, and that's a huge challenge. You saw Abby Ursic 
their former captain, played in three World Cups, plays for the Carolina Courage. She actually, out of frustration, and this is what just drives me batty with women's soccer, uh, is that a player has to do something as drastic as retire, and she's only in her late 20s, she had another cycle in it for sure, to make a point that we need more support, this isn't good enough. The players at home aren't getting the support they deserve. Yeah, it's a big, big loss also. Amber Hearn, who's their career scoring leader, opted to sit these games out. They're also missing Katie Dunker, who retired, who was a staple of this team. So we're talking about a lot of experience amongst those players. And Ersig, uh, as a leader for this team, Tony Reading saying, look, the, the only way we can absorb her absence is collectively. Right. And it's too bad because, you know, and she felt she needed to do that. She said, I'd lost the joy of what I was doing. And, you know, I just felt I could do more in pushing the program along from the outside than from the inside. But she says they're trying to do the right thing. It's just it's hard when they get these development programs going and they don't then support it with funding to take care of the players while they are training. And they've started a program called the Football Ferns Development Program, and that's for domestic place base players in New Zealand. There's a good look at Hannah Wilkinson. Hundreds cap there for Betsy Hassett. Sal run with the switch. Dal Compton. Hard driven ball, beautiful ball. Because it gets quickly to the feet of Rapino now. Glides inside. Here's Rapino taking some contact. And she's going to earn a foul. And Katie Bowen's going to say, look, you know. He stepped in front, the ball was coming to me. She had no chance to get it. It'll be a free kick, U.S. And I think Katie Bowen has an argument to make there. We'll see it on the replay here. The ball got away from her, and she's... I think that's a fair challenge. Well, she got her with a little hit there, didn't she, in the end? <laughs> but the beauty of Rapino taking people on. She's earning right. free kicks. She's making things happen. Goes over the top. Out for a goal kick. ESPN's presentation of U.S. soccer is brought to you by Ali. Do it right. And PlayStation View. Watch the biggest moments in sports. Try it free today. So far, uh, Julie, all right, we're 23 minutes in. Let's just get your initial thoughts here. Much better than what we saw, I think, at Tournament of Nations. And there's an urgency and a pace and an energy to it that just looks better. The speed of play is better. And mind you, you know, New Zealand isn't a Brazil or a Japan or an Australia even, but they're a good team. And this just looks better all around for the U.S. They look fresher. They're feistier. Over the top, this one goes kind of legging this one down as Dal Camper is making sure she escorts this back to Alyssa Nair. Sixth straight start for Nair, who plays for the Chicago Red Stars seems to be in the position to lose the position, right? Would you say she's at the top of the pecking order in goalkeeping for the U.S. right now? For Nair? Yes. I, I would, and Ash, you know, because Ashlyn Harris is, has been injured, Jane Campbell is still young, but I think there's a lot of roads still between now and, of course, the World Cup, and I, I think Jill Ellis has said, I'm going to use these next six domestic games or actually six games in this calendar year to, you know, to get minutes to multiple keepers, so. Yeah, you made a great point. It is still a long road to call from. Oh, this is a wonderful turn. Can Pugh get it over? She'll get it to the far post. Rapino off the post. Hurts again. It's 2-0. Smashes in the rebound. That's entertainment. <laughs> again, Rapino making her mark. And this is one she wants again. You can see her reaction after that didn't go in, but Ertz played right along with that rebound. And again, she makes it look easy. That is not an easy ball to finish. Coming, bouncing back at you. 
The way she did, mind you, she's been center back for the last two years with the national team. And here's a player with two beautiful goals tonight. As if she's been playing that center midfield position her whole life. Two goals in eight minutes for Julie Hertz. Hertz, she'll get her 11th international goal. And she was t telling us at practice yesterday, you know, she, she goes, it's fun because now I know I have some cover behind me. So it's a little different outlook for her in the holding midfield position. And mind you, she has played some midfield growing up in, in Santa Clara as well. But for her to make that transition to center back, do, did so well in the 2015 World Cup and the Olympics, and then now back into midfield. It's great to see. And she was the best 11 at the World Cup as a center back. Standing World Cup for the United States. Nayer. She's been moved into midfield to give players like Abby Dalcomper more opportunity to prove themselves out. Wilkinson now. He's put a boatload of goals at Tennessee in the SEC. O'Hare. Hurts. And overhead it. Throwing New Zealand now in the 26th minute. Someone do that behind you. Just do it. That's not what we worked on, Kirsty. Do what we worked on. Interesting to hear Tony Reading saying that's not what we worked on, Christy. Talking to Yalek. Two teams will meet again in Cincinnati on Tuesday at Nippert Stadium. I think he's referencing, he said, the first part of that was bending it in behind her. You saw Becky Sullivan intercept that pass. And so much of the strength of New Zealand in that attacking presence is Wilkinson's speed and getting in behind defenses. Trying to get that ball in behind the defense. Well, that's a good diagonal ball. I mean, boy, it just didn't drop properly for New Zealand. But that one uh, caught the U.S. back four. They were trying to pick out that run from Annalie Longo. Also picking up her 100th cap tonight. Unlucky by O'Hara on that touch, but again, Horan getting out of a tight space, the switch of field, finding that other outside back. And here's the ball in from New Zealand, and this is the one they want. That's the look where it gets in behind. That one squirts through there dangerously. Taylor Smith on the wrong side. Pino won the initial header here. It's New Zealand. O'Hara is going to shield this out. It'll be a throw-in for the United States. They're 12-1-1 lifetime against New Zealand. Scoring 51 goals, only conceding five. We've got two tonight from Ertz in a span of eight minutes. The U.S. a 2-0 lead over New Zealand. Glenn Davis alongside Julie Foudy here in Commerce City, Colorado. Hard to believe, Julie, it's still a year until qualifying for France 2019 begins. Sauerbrunn, Rapino has to split to. She is running at people like there's no tomorrow. Zealand throw here in the 29th minute. New Zealand also trying to build a deeper player pool. They've been to four World Cups, they've been to numerous Olympics. In fact, participated in the last three Olympics. 
It's knocked out of there by Sauerbrunn. What a servant Becky Sauerbrunn has been for the U.S. women's national team. Sauerbrunn now at 32 years of age, twice has been the NWSL Defender of the Year with FC Kansas City. And just so consistently good. I call her jokingly butter because she's smooth as butter. But that, that's the thing that I think is so hard at this level. It's one thing to be good. It's another to be consistently good. She's, and she's just not consistently good. She's consistently great. It's not even fair. Dude, what a model professional she is. Allie Riley trying to get there. Still trying to get herself forward a couple more times here. Big switch of play here. Good ball from Dal Camper. Hit it hard and low to get it quickly to the feet of O'Hara. Sauerbrunn, Rapino, O'Hara overlapping her, she'll go inside. Mewis. Dal Camper, big investment being made in her by Jill Ellis and also Sam Mewis with the amount of minutes those two players have been getting. Look at Rhea Percival, 125th appearance tonight for her. O'Hara towards the near post, it's flicked to the back post and headed away. Smith trying to get there. Oh, what an idea. Mewis on the turn tried to slip a little ball through. The only, the only problem was is uh, Alex, oh, I thought it was to, to Morgan. She was pointing at her feet, wanting to turn and spin her. Kayla Moore stepping up. Longo knocks it wide. It's a direct ball. Oates going to ground to try and get the tackle in. Yallop now. And really most of the New Zealand attacks have stalled out. U.S. the early exit from the 2016 Olympics. Hosting two tournaments on their own soil here. Did not win them here in the U.S. And then on the other hand, yes, some people might get upset because of how high the bar is set. But if you are going to experiment with a team, integrate new players, work on the flexibility of your tactics, it's not going to all go right, right? No, and, and, and Jill Ellis said repeatedly to us, listen, I'd rather have you know, World Cup or Olympic gold and Olympic gold medal on the resume of all these players then, you know, didn't win the She Believes Cup in 2017. Really, what's the end game here? Q, here's Sam Lewis now, played at UCLA. Oh, it's a beautiful ball. Horan tries the diving header. Can't get on the end of it. But Lewis and Horan trying to link up there as Horan uh, summoning her uh, instincts as a former striker and a good sign that your center midfielder getting in again trying to beat those lines just a little too much on that but again the idea is good for the u.s i think they're going to be very pleased if all stays the same and they go in at halftime 35th minute now to continue the conversation on Jill Ellis. Don't we have to say she's being brave as a coach because she is preemptive here, thinking out long term. Uh, a lot of managers and coaches could sit on the same successful team, 
uh, and be very safe. And it seems Which to they be do. she's not being safe. <laughs> right, right. She's, yeah, she's looking a, to the future. Yeah, we've seen a lot of coaches do that, of course, in this program and not want to, you know, tinker as much. I mean, I think the challenges, your only concern in all of that is what does it do to the fear factor of other teams playing the United States. So Australia, for example, had never beat the United States until this summer, ever, <laughs> in the history of their program. So now what you hear from Australia is them saying, you know what, we used to fear the U.S. mentally, and we've gotten over that hurdle. And that's the only edge that I think players worry about. But that's going to happen as the world catches up. Right? Well, I was about to say, isn't the world it's, catching up? Isn't some of that due to the and that's uh, a good expanse sign. and growth of Australia? For sure. So I do think it is courageous. I think the key is you want to be courageous and get results, which doesn't always happen. Moran is prone here. Clutching her right leg. Ertz hits a diagonal ball. The U.S. play on here. Moran slow to get up. Here's Alex Morgan now. She's got Pew. At the top of the box, she squares it back. It will be a corner for the U.S., but Haran's still down. Gosh, she took it in a couple places, it looks like. Knee, elbow. God, that's a hard tackle. And stepped on. Haran is up. Surprised that wasn't uh, deemed a reckless challenge. Here's Rapino off the corner now. Box is loaded up. Haran's in there. Mewis is in there. It goes directly to the goalkeeper, Aaron Naylor. Played collegiately at Indiana University, Purdue in Fort Wayne, Indiana. So there's some ties to the college game here on the New Zealand roster. Seventh minute, a pair of goals from Julie Ertz. 16th minute and 24th. The 2 0 lead on a night where Kelly O'Hara earns her 100th cap for the United States, joining 30 other U.S. players, including the one next to me, Julie Fadden. Third. Third athlete from the fine institution called Stanford University. There's a lot of Stanford To get to 100. A lot mind, of you, in the house. mind you, North Carolina has 12, but we are catching up. Clint. Here we go. <laughs> 274 appearances. I'm getting tired just looking at that. They keep finding caps. Every like year, they're like, oh, we found another cap. Who's well, got 174 <laughs> more? 174 more to catch you. <laughs> and she did mention she wants to win another World Cup and another gold medal. Sauerbrunn. And here is Kelly O'Hara. Converted to an outside back, is played in the right back and left back position for the U.S. And he's done it wonderfully. We should mention, it did take me 37 minutes to say it. I, I withheld until 37. The third, the third one, of course, is, is Rachel Bueller. You showed a lot of patience tonight. <laughs> Thank you. Restraint. We're on the subject of Stanford, Andy Sullivan, still rehabbing the ACL injury, who we were all very impressed with before she got injured. So there's people coming back from injury. Yeah, Tobin Heath playing, has been looking good in training. She's Stanford this season. Yeah, she's definitely in the picture. Yeah, Heath has, has been out. Last game of the national team, March, with her back. She's not on this roster of 18, but in training camp. Morgan pressing here. Pugh and Rapino have flip-flopped in the wide areas. Emily Longo, number 10, is one of the domestic base players in New Zealand on the ball right now.
Beautiful clip ball towards Rapino. Stott recovering to win the header. Allie Riley trying to get into the attack. Played in uh, Sweden now for six years. Good curling ball into the box. Wilkinson lays the header off. But the poor control there is going to let down what might have been a good opportunity for New Zealand. They'll drive it back into the box. Again, it's clear by Mewis. Pass it. And the ball into space will go back to the goalkeeper, Alyssa Mayer. Wednesday, 7 p.m. Eastern on ESPN2. Atlanta United squaring off against the LA Galaxy. It is an important one. The United sits, they just sit above the playoff line. Major League Soccer presented by Audi, also streaming live on the ESPN app. And then the U.S. Open Cup Final. Sporting Kansas City, the New York Red Bulls, Wednesday, 9 Eastern on ESPN2. Oldest national soccer competition in the United States. How great has it been to see the response of Atlanta to that team to United out there? Oof, what they did the other night to New England hurts 7 0. Yeah. New stadium looks phenomenal. Yeah, that's uh, the new Mercedes Benz Stadium, which. A lot of home games now for Atlanta United, which is perfect for them at the back end of the season now. It comes to the playoff picture. Taylor Smith. He was undrafted out of UCLA. Turned into a right back, 23 years of age. Member of the North Carolina Courage under Paul Riley. Morgan flicks it on. Here's Pew. Nice, comfortable control there. O'Hara. Diagonal ball. Flying off the line was Naylor. Oran was there. It's a chance here for a hat trick potentially. Because Julie Hertz, Hertz has turned into a goal scoring machine here in the first half. She is hungry. She's got a nose for it too, Hertz. Look at that. She's just always hovering around it. And Naylor, if you're going to come that far, you have to get something on that. That ball cannot drop if you're the New Zealand goalkeeper. Been an eventful first half for Ertz. She now has 11 goals for the U.S. Nine of those have been off. Set pieces in corner, boy, throwing her head on it was Wilkinson, was defended well there, tucking in nicely was Taylor Smith to throw her off, going up with her. We talk about a lot of her game is going forward, but right there, that's some great defensive work. Responsible. Great crowd here at Dick's Sporting Goods Park. Stadium that opened in 2007, the home of the Colorado Rapids. White will drive it. Headed out by Mallory Pugh. Can the U.S. break out here? Rapino. With Mallory Pugh trying to thread a pass into where it's cut out by New Zealand. But the U.S. recognizing an opportunity to go forward. Good read by Ali Riley, the left back for New Zealand there. U.S. fans very familiar with Ali Riley. Back in the WPS days, played with FC Gold Pride on a title with him. Coming up at the half, Morgan and Rapino, the common goal. This is very interesting. Uh, you'll be interested to hear about that. It involves Juan Mata of Manchester United and Julia Ertz. Scoring twice here in the first half. Yeah, it's a great initiative that just launched, giving 1% of their salaries back to charities to do good for football, soccer around, around the world. Smith, Lewis, he's got that big range of passing this time. 
doesn't work out for her. Sauerbrunn is going to go back to Melissa Nair, who really has been protected here in the first half, has not had to do much. Nair played at Penn State. One minute of stoppage time has been added here in the first half. Sauerbrunn. Here's the challenge for New Zealand. When you're not playing as many games. I mean, you are internationally, of course, they're clubs, but the domestic kids aren't just playing as much. You're up at altitude here. You're playing against a very fit U.S. team. Physically, how that second half turns out for, the, for New Zealand will be key. There's one of the domestic players you mentioned. That was Moore who fouled Alex Morgan. Here comes the U.S. Rapino now will curl it in towards the six. Not the best of clears by New Zealand. It's still alive here. Morgan besieged by two and three defenders. Gets it to O'Hara. Rapino. Good ball to the back post. Trying to throw herself out. It. Guess who? Lindsay Horan. Still trying to get that goal in front of her fans here. <laughs> and a good ball by Kelly. <clears throat> sorry, Rapino across here. Just plays it, and those are so dangerous when they come driven with pace, bending at your goal. And they're also hard to then time. Good job by New Zealand to get a foot on it there by Moore. Julie Ertz was in there again as well. He's got the two first half goals. That is the story. How about a little recap on the first 45 minutes? I, 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 what a performance by Julie Ertz. Again, giving that team a lift, the boost, the energy, and two really well taken goals. And a much deserved 2 0 first half for the United States. Looks so much better. The Chicago Red Star star has staked out the U.S. to a 2 0 lead over New Zealand. We'll take a break. More to come from Dick Sporting Goods Park in Colorado. Welcome back to Dick Sporting Goods Park. Game on here in the second half. The U.S. with a 2-0 lead. Julie Ertz with a pair of goals in the first half. The United States in white. New Zealand in the black. Your referee is Katja Korleva. U.S. Uh, remain with their same 11 here as they switch the play to Abby Dalcomper. Mewis. Taylor Smith, who gets uh, crippled there and brought down. It'll be a free kick for the United States now. She has shown real prowess getting forward here tonight. And this is the pace that Taylor Smith can unleash. And the reaction when she landed on that hip, she grabs it right away. Mongo picks up a yellow card. Good news is she's back up and walking. Looking to stretch it out a little bit. Ripping Longo, who also got in on that heavy challenge against Lindsay Horan in the first half. Here's Rapino now standing over the set piece here. Rapino curls out. It's a wonderful ball. It's in a great pocket of space. Naylor made a save. It's still the U.S. Absolutely. Perfectly placed ball by Megan Rapino. That's about as beautiful a ball as you can put. Naylor did very well to even get in the way of that. Morgan gets brought down. She's wanting a foul, won't get it. And what a big save that is for Naylor and for New Zealand. Because you go down 3-0 right at the beginning of this half, and that is a dagger mentally. Ball hits the perfect area where it kind of tempts the goalkeeper to come or stay, puts him in two minds. And, and she just places that right in. 
that's Haran again. So many good looks right in front of goal. She typically puts away. Direct ball towards Wilkinson now. Here's Sauerbrunn. Uh, the veteran turns out of there. Spectacular from Betts. Ball, but she gave it away. Becky Sauerbrunn, I thought, had pulled the U.S. out of that one. It'll be a free kick, New Zealand. Seemed like the U.S. had gotten out of that situation and then dangerous ball got cut out by New Zealand and it's led to this free kick now. So some work to do for Alyssa Nayer. Breeze really kind of whipping through here now at Dick's Sporting Goods Park. You can see it. been tested much so this is going to be interesting tonight especially with that wind whipping as you just said Glenn she hasn't been that busy Longo stands over it so does Rosie White looks like it's going to be Rosie White here although Longo about five yards six yards to her right It'll be Rosie White, she bends it, and it's easily handled by Nair. Never a tester. This is a good piece of distribution. It's a good idea. Just miss hitting the flying Mallory Pugh. And here's the look on goal again. Nair there to cover it pretty easily. You may recall the one went through her hands in the Tournament of Nations. Talk to Jill Ellis about that yesterday and she said look my only thing I said to her is the learning moment here's Taylor Smith again with that hip still bugging her she said the only thing I said to her is the learning moment out of that is it took too long for you to recover which I thought was a great answer she says look that stuff happens right and what a great teachable moment now let's switch gears here Taylor Smith is down getting uh, some medical attention here. We're, we're getting word she's coming off for Sophie Huerta, who's going to become the first player to play for and against the United States because she represented Mexico in a full squad international. So this is a really interesting well, story. 20, yeah, under 20 and she, has been, she has been training with the U.S. So expand on this a little bit with Huerta and what she brings. All right. Well, and Huerta for the Chicago Red Stars plays in an attacking outside wide position. And here she is in her first cap with the U.S. team playing in an outside back position, which she hasn't played before. Uh, but this is really where Jill Ellis wants to look at her. Good work from Taylor Smith, who goes out here tonight. So Huerta, in July, they requested uh, to FIFA to change her affiliation. It got approved yesterday, and here she is put into the starting lineup. Here she is uh, for the U.S. as Pew gets it over, tries to pick out Haran. And just a reminder for some fans that were confused by it, you're allowed that one-time switch when it's been a FIFA-sanctioned youth national team event you couldn't do that of course at the senior level if you played in a world cup for mexico which is why she didn't play in the 2015 world cup for mexico she could have very easily played on that team and waited it out with no assurance of course that she was going to play with the u.s team U.S. now has got a lot of room to run right out new zealand lots of nice weighted pass morgan trying to slip it into pew yeah, it's going to be a free kick New Zealand here. So more on Huerta. What does she bring in the right back position that Jill Ellis likes? Pace, good technical ability, obviously attacking, uh, savvy, you know, all the things you saw in, in uh, Kelly O'Hara when they moved her back to that outside back position. Uh, and she's got bite. You know, she said she's not afraid to go tackle, to get in, to get dirty. And she said, I figure I can teach her all these things. I want to see if she can do it at that outside back position. He was a college and pro teammate of Julie Ertz at Santa Clara and the Chicago Red Stars. If we look at some of these trialists in the outside back position, we go to Casey Short, we also go to Taylor Smith, we go now to Sofia Huerta. We do know there's a lot of capability going forward. 
Are they good enough one-on-one -on -one defenders? Defend first defenders. Well, I think that's what she has to find out because especially for Taylor Smith and Huerta, they come from an offensive mindset first. Here's Huerta, tried to help it on. It'll be interesting to see how she combines with Mallory Pugh here in this wide area. Ertz is all over the place. She'll drive a cross in. Neulis, big switch of play. Rapino's got it with a lot of space here. Rapino squares it in. It's cut out. She'll get it back off the deflection. And it goes out for a goal kick to New Zealand. So the North Carolina Courage and Portland in great shape here. Chicago, Orlando. And Seattle, Seattle flying. Those are the three that are vying for that third and fourth spot. Courage in Portland have secured home semifinal games, and it's going all out to the end. And you saw in that halftime interview <laughs> with Alex Morgan, who plays for Orlando, of course, and Rapino. They just tied recently. Orlando was, you know, seconds away from securing their playoff spot. Seattle comes back to tie in the end there, but I said, all right, who's going through? Like Chicago needs to keep sliding. Yeah, that sliding uh, jumped out there. That was a pretty fun piece to that interview. That's going to be a free kick for the U.S. Wilkinson. The NWSL playoffs started today. This is what it would look like. All the matches will be on lifetime. It would be number one North Carolina against Orlando and then number two Portland against Chicago with the final on October 14th. Year's champ. Pumped about that. I get to I get to do the studio for this, so that'll be fun. Playoff time. Yes. New Zealand. Five players around the top of the box here. We'll need some good delivery. Driven in, took a slight deflection and the diving header there. Spectacular from Becky Sauerbrunn. And the veteran throws her head at it. And again, I go back to that save Naylor made because now New Zealand again has life. And look at their knocking. It's only 2-0. They come back in this game with a goal. All of a sudden, this game changes. It very easily could have been a different situation if Naylor doesn't make that save on that set piece. Becky Sauerbrunn, by the way, has started all 10 games for the United States in 2017. Here's New Zealand off the corner now. This is going to pull the U.S. out now. It all depends on this type of ball. Let's play back in. Wilkinson trying to battle in there. Hurts will make that Haran winning the header and winning this tackle here as well. So Haran back defending as well. And one might say, with the outstanding season she's having in the NWSL, um, Boy, uh, what more can you say about her, how important she is for Portland? Cleared by Ertz. Rapino. Self-pass, is she going to get there? No. Too quick there. Was Rhea Percival, but Megan Rapino pushing the envelope when it comes to going to goal here tonight. There's been no hesitation. Percival's done well on that right back side, too, for New Zealand. She's had her hands full with, with Megan wanting to push that envelope. Well, that's not a bad cross. Slight to touch there from Moore. Shooting opportunity. It's a blast over the top. How nice would have that been for Kelly O'Hara in her 100th appearance? When she gets a hold of this, not afraid, as we saw her do so many times in college, to put her laces on this. Mac Herman award winner in college at Stanford and seen her also do it at Sky Blue, of course, plays on all three lines there. You literally, you literally see their, <laughs> their start sheet. I had someone pull 
Jim Cooper, thank you for this. Uh, he does all the NWSL stats. I had a poll where Kelly played every game for Sky Blue, and it would be like, you know, outside back, right midfield, attacking, you know, right forward. <laughs> it was every line, every position. Ali Long getting set to come on. Crystal Dunn and Kristen Press. So, how's that for a trio coming off a bench? Dickinson was back defending her header. Sauerbrunn. The Pino. Cross is blocked. The Pino has been tormenting, teasing, and uh, literally has become a pest for the New Zealand defenders here tonight. Morgan hits the near post, goes to the back post, and not able to make contact with Sam Mewis. Long, Kristen Press, Crystal Dunn. Rapino will come off. Press will come on. And this is also something Jill Ellis is very aware of as we were showing those standings for NWSL team still on the hunt. For Seattle still on the hunt. Managing minutes for Rapino. Chicago still in the hunt, managing minutes for press. Mewis. Coming off for Ali Long. Mewis will get a break, boy. She's put in a lot of minutes for both her NWSL team in the U.S. And Crystal Dunn will come on. For Mallory Pugh, who's got a lot of friends and family in attendance here tonight. Assess Mallory Pugh's performance here tonight, Julie. I thought she did well. She gave a ton of pace on that right flank. We saw her getting behind. She served the cross that Rapino headed off the bar. Uh, and, and that's that's why I like that 4-3-3 positioning better, because it puts her higher, right? Rather than in a deeper winger role, puts her higher where she can get in and turn the corner more. Same with Rapino on the other side. I think when you have those two flank players, I mean, imagine when they add into the mix. Now you got Dunn, who's coming off the bench with fresh legs. Now, didn't Heath, we in our discussion? Heath is going to be healthy soon. Didn't uh, in, in our discussion with Jill Ellis, didn't she pretty much reveal to us that she's defined what is the best U.S. system, and that's the 4-3-3 based on the type of player she has? For the moment, I think she said she also recognizes it needs to be flexible to the personnel, which I think is absolutely right. But she definitely has said, too, four back is, is much preferred. We saw her do the three back experiment that didn't go very well earlier in the year. Of course, she could alter it also for her opposition and all the other things. But, but she kind of said that this seems to be what we'll build off. Yes. Skips past. Allie Riley, who's buzzing around everywhere. It's a good story with Allie Riley and, and Kelly O'Hara as the two captains of the, the team today hugging each other uh, pregame because, of course, they played all four years at Stanford together where roommates played FC Gold Pride together and go way, way back. Neat to see them pregame together. Morgan. Got support from behind with O'Hara. Unforced error there, and it's one back now by New Zealand. Morgan in such great form right now. Scored on August 3rd against Japan in the Tournament of Nations. Eight goals. Or, excuse me, nine goals in nine games for Orlando and was voted the August NWSL Player of the Month, so we can't uh, forget how 
she has been for performing for club as Kristen Press can't get picked out there in the 63rd minute. And it's great to see Morgan healthy again, too. And how about Huerta in her first cap ever for the United States? And by the way, the only player in the history of the program who's played for the United States and against the United States now, and also the first player from Idaho to get a national team cap, by the way. But how about you're starting your first cap at outside back position, which you've never played at the national team level and really haven't played much at the club level. And Seems okay. I mean, she's doing fine. Mind you, she's not coming into a game 3-1 down against Brazil, but... Well, that's an unenviable position. <laughs> she had a great cross in. She almost just threaded one in there. Sauerbrunn, O'Hara. Hurts now. It has, it has been forward. interesting, though, sorry, Glenn, to, to see uh, how that outside back position has just hurt Jill Ellis a little bit in terms of not being able to find the right switch. I mean, mind you, at home right now, you have Ali Krieger and Megan Klingenberg, who are two excellent outside backs who didn't even make this 23. So she's had plenty to look at, that's for sure. And that's not to say they're not going to be back in, because I think for sure they will. Hurts press. Trying to bring in the fly and Crystal Dunn. Goes out for a goal kick. Crystal Dunn is over in England with Chelsea. Hey, Sunday's an important three points on the line for the Red Bulls. Bradley Wright Phillips will lead New York against the Philadelphia Union. Red Bull Arena is the site in Harrison, New Jersey. Our coverage here on ESPN will kick off at 1 p.m. Eastern and on the ESPN app. So, points at a premium right now for Major League Soccer teams. You don't get in the playoffs. It's not been a good season. Simple as that. <laughs> really picking up here in Commerce City. Temperature cooling down. We can feel it here uh, in the booth. Sixty fifth minute. U.S. still sitting on a 2 0 lead here. They would love to get the game's next goal. And put this beyond reach. Wilkinson. Wilkinson, Rosie White, they've chased a lot of lost causes up front here today. Done. Let this cross is blocked as she got in front of Crystal Dunn. It'll be a corner for the United States here now. Center back, Abby Dal Kemper. We'll take the corner. To the back post. Glances off the top of the head of Horan. Done. O'Hara. U.S. getting the ball off their feet pretty quickly here. Sauerbrunn. Dahl Kemper. Out for a goal kick for New Zealand. And how about that story by Graham Hayes on Abby Dahl Kemper on ESPNW with the septic infection in her foot? And that all took place right after those November games against Romania in 2016 and she spends the entire winter really trying to get better because that's the, that's something you know it's a blood infection that can spread to your organs and it started to move up the leg and I mean that's something that I, I didn't even know was happening there's so many people who had no idea that she was going through all this Very scary situation Kemper some might be calling her the next Becky Sauerbrunn and uh, telling when uh, Becky Stauberg's career will end with the way she's playing it. Uh, at the international level has been impeccable and it just keeps going on and on. But And she's a player like a Mewis that just, and, and of Stauberg, that logs so many minutes for club. And 
Now we're seeing her doing it similar for country as well. Here's Becky Salbrum. Co-captain of the U.S. Women's National Team, captain of FC Kansas City, three-time NWSL Defender of the Year. Percival trying to get there and can't. It'll be a throw in for the U.S. here in the 68th minute. So, so what do you want to see from the United States Yeah, I was just going to say a little bit of a lull. You can Let's feel see. the momentum has slowed down a little bit for the United States. They were buzzing that first half. And mind you, that's to be expected in altitude. And, you know, you, in the end of a season. But this is, I think, the challenge for the U.S. is they've got to finish this game off. Because at 2-0, even with New Zealand not having much of the ball, they're still in this game. Allie Long is brought down. And out it goes. So uh, the players off the bench, Allie Long, Crystal Dunn, who just came on, as well as Kristen Press. I, I would think the energy's got to come from them now to kind of get the U.S. lifted here again. Yeah, and especially you have Press and Dunn both going on on that front line. And so you can see they're not pressing as much defensively. That may have come from something Jill said to them off the bench to pull back a little bit. But I, I think that's where the energy comes is that defensively you get it going. Because I think if this ends 2-0 two, two tonight here in the United States, it's a disappointment that you don't get the third right? For as well as they played in that first 45, yes, and as much control as they've had in this game. And I think the next stated goal is to really kill this game off convincingly. Ali Riley. Yallop goes back. Good switch of play there for Moore. Scott will knock it into midfield. A bit more confidence on the ball here from New Zealand. This is their best phase here, and they picked out their star striker in Wilkinson. Here's Wilkinson in the box. Boy, he might have had an opportunity to hit it with her left foot. He brought it down, and it allowed others to come back defensively, but that was the best buildup I think we've seen on the night from New Zealand. Nice sequence. Here they go again. Hit the back of Rosie White. And the U.S. will switch it. O'Hara now. She's got a lot of space in front of her. Haran from nearby Golden, Colorado. Good switch. Here's Huerta. Cross is driven in. Takes an awkward bounce. It's Alex Morgan. And shot is blocked. It'll be another corner here for the U.S. I tell you what, Percival has put in a shift tonight at that right back position. I think she's been phenomenal for New Zealand. And the pace to keep up with these players. But again, now she had Rapino. She's got Morgan on that side. She's got fresh legs coming off with press as well. It's the back post. Horan was there. Here's Crystal Dunn now. Nice step over. She'll be involved in Champions League play coming up in October in Europe. And here's the aforementioned Rhea Percival, 125th appearance for her tonight, Julie. You mentioned her. Uh, she's been dogged and determined on the right back position here tonight. Just announced over 17,000 here at Dick Sporting Goods Park in Commerce City. A little subtle change up front is that Kristen Press has slid into the middle, and Alex Morgan, who Jill Ellis told us obviously can play very easily out on the left, has moved uh, into a wider position. Time she was cutting inside. New Zealand has won it back. Wilkinson has got space, and it's a shooting opportunity. It goes over the top. Another good chance, though, carved out. Wilkinson 
She's Must do better with this. And she's getting her placement, though. She finds that little seam, nice first touch, but this has to be on target. You got to make Nayer make that save if you're Wilkinson. Looked like a tired forward when she hit it. Just that little bit off balance, leaning back. But still a spark of life in New Zealand here. Well, which some might have thought in the 72nd minute, the altitude might get to them, the way they had to get here, or traveling from all over. They only got here Tuesday. They don't get to Venner. They don't get together much. Um, so, more changes. Morgan Bryan, who's had her injury problems, is going to get some minutes here. And the local from Colorado, Lindsey Horan, will get a wonderful ovation here. And Brian only played 13 minutes at the Tournament of Nations. 24-year-old has, as mentioned, been hampered by injuries. This got traded from the Houston Dash to the Chicago Red Stars. Let's just get your assessment on Lindsay Horan's night, Julie. I thought I watched her as she came off to the, the sideline there, um, giving Pew a big hug and then giggling together. But I, I, you could see that look of, you know, <laughs> she's such a good finisher too, right? That look of, yeah, I wanted one tonight. I wanted one at home tonight, and she could have had one tonight. So, uh, But I like Haran in that attacking central. This is a good ball from Ali Riley in the box. It's 2-1. to one. It's game on here for New Zealand. They've hung around. The U.S. hasn't produced that third goal despite all the opportunities. And Hannah Wilkinson and company have made this a game here. And here's the exact situation. We were talking about with that early save to keep New Zealand in this game. And what a ball by Allie Riley. That just drops in. It is an apple waiting there. Nayer comes a little bit late for that. And Wilkinson did so well to put that on that one on frame. She wasn't going to miss. But that's a ball Nayer could come a little bit earlier for, I think, clean up much sooner and she's not even in that situation where she's having to make it a 50 50. there's another look at it and this is a different game now at 2-1 clearly cern here now is wilkinson by the way has scored four times against the u.s in her career now down for the u.s is kelly o'hara so there's some concern here Ali Riley's ball that was bent in put the U.S. in a difficult position. It was a wonderful ball, and it's now two to one. Kelly O'Hara slow to get up here. I believe the signal being made there to change out Kelly O'Hara. Looks like Casey Short. Leave is going to come on here. Kelly O'Hara coming out here, precautionary. Casey Short will now go into the left back position. Another look at that collision. Nair and O'Hara. See her getting it. With Nair coming out, those two colliding and it knocking her head back. And you clearly have to be so cautious with that. U.S. Uh, projected lift off the bench, not occurring. There's Morgan now. 
She'll square it in. It's cut out again. New Zealand has cut out a lot of crosses here tonight. Morgan's going to get called for the foul. And all of a sudden, this game looks very, very different after New Zealand has produced this one goal. And I give a lot of credit to New Zealand because it easily could have gone the other way. We saw it was 2-0 at half, and it felt about like 3 or 4-0. And yet they came out in typical Kiwi fashion with a lot of fire in that second half and flattened the momentum of the United States and have stayed organized, made the big saves when they needed to. Well, Tony Readings is going to be happy that his team has showed the battling spirit to stay in this one. And it also, uh, and that 70 minute mark, 65 minute mark here, a lot of teams die in the altitude. They have hung in there. And New Zealand, by the way, has not made any changes. They've stuck with the same 11 here. Dunn trying to create something. Tried to pick out Ali Long. With the changes the U.S. made, they've made four changes now. Have they been able to get as organized as you would have liked here? Well, I think what it did is it disrupts your rhythm a little bit, and that's to be expected. But, I mean, look at the f four, as you mentioned, Glenn, that are that are coming off the bench. And, I mean, the only one really in a new position is, is Huerta. And my apologies, six changes. Beautiful control for Morgan, three to one, hits a side netting. Spectacular goal. Beautiful switch of play. Pinpoint accuracy on the finish. And that ball, by the way, came from Juan Sofia Puerta, who we were just talking about in her first first cap ever for the United States, first cap at outside back. She plays that ball across to Morgan. And Alex Morgan wanting one all night, drops it dead, just finds a little bit of a window on Percival, makes her lean, freeze, creates that little gap. What a nice finish that is to create that window and hit it with enough pace to beat Naylor on that near post. Because Naylor's been making some big saves all night. And what a goal and a timely one that is for Alex Morgan. 75th international goal. Such a picture of soft control. And then made the space for herself. That one on August 3rd against Japan. And tonight we'll get her 75th, tying Cindy Parlow for seventh in team history. And that's huge because you could feel the game shifting. You could feel the momentum change. New Zealand was back in it. And that one basically says not so fast. Press is going to get there. Kristen Press will rob it and it goes wide. We've seen her score goals like that. But she was always the favorite to get there first. He's just going to say the same thing. How many times have we seen Kristen Press so opportunistic on those little bouncers coming over that lob the keeper? Aaron Naylor off the goal kick for New Zealand. Eighty second minute. U.S. a three to one lead here. But much respect to New Zealand who have had some real challenging conditions, not only to get here, to get organized, to train a little bit under their coach, and then as the 19th ranked team in the world have to face the number one team in the world. Julie mentioned their last match in March in the Cyprus Cup. Hurts. He's got two of the three U.S. goals. Trying to work a give and go here. And 
Huerta will go all the way back to Becky Sauerbrunn. Ali Long, Doc Comper. It's interesting, we've seen central midfielders too get runs of games, right? We had that time period where Ali Long was playing a lot central, was then dropped back to a center back. I mean, boy, I think every player on this team has to be thinking of where they are in the pecking order and, and the competition that they're facing. And the importance of versatility and, and being able to play multiple positions. Dunn trying to work a give and go. It's, uh, a lot of space here on the right side, and the throw will come now to New Zealand. He's going to make their first change of the night now. Coming off for New Zealand is Yallop. Coming on is Olivia Chance. Chance will pick up her fifth cap. Plays in England for Everton and played collegiately at the University of South Florida. So, a career that's taken her a number of different places. Tell me the stories of, of where these women have gone to play and what leagues they play, and absolutely fascinating. Especially if you live in a country like New Zealand. I mean, they're, they're all over the place. When you go down their list, we were given it before, Switzerland, France, England, Germany, Sweden, Iceland, Norway, Italy. It's crazy. U.S., of course. I do hope they get some funding in New Zealand. You hate to see the Abbey Ursigs of the world feel like the only way they can make their voice heard is by having to leave the game, right? And, uh, and that's a player that should be out there on the field tonight, no question. Done with a sweeping touch inside. Brian Press will get a shot off. She'll pull it wide. Good work to get a shot off amongst three defenders. On Wednesday at 7 p.m. Eastern on ESPN2, Atlanta United will square off against the LA Galaxy. It's an important one for United as they sit just above the playoff line. And after United and Galaxy finish up on Wednesday, we'll take you to Kansas City for the Lamar Hunt U.S. Open Cup Final. The New York Red Bulls and Sporting Kansas City. The host team are three-time Open Cup champions, while New York will look for their first Open Cup title. By the way, it is the oldest ongoing national soccer competition in the United States and the third oldest Open tournament in the world. And you can always catch it streaming live on the ESPN app. So uh, playing for a trophy. Sporting Kansas City and the New York Red Bulls. And they've got that match amongst making sure that uh, they secure a good playoff position. So is that for a throw in? I, I think if you're Jill Ellis tonight, though, you, you, even though it took him a while to, to finish this game off, mind you, with five minutes left, I'm, I'm giving him that, but to finish this game off, I mean, there's a lot to be pleased about with this 4-3-3, with Ertz, of course, in that holding center midfield position. Uh, and, and because she had been debating that, whether it was Ali Long or Sam Mewis, I think Ertz locks that down tonight, of course. And I thought Pew out wide, Rapino out wide, it's another plus for that 4-3-3 system. Alex Morgan getting a goal tonight for her confidence and consistency. And really, that first half, they were buzzing. Good energy, good movement off the ball. I mean, the challenge is now stringing that for 90 minutes, of course, but I think there's a lot to be pleased about. Rosie White comes off. Busy night for her. Put in a great effort. Coming on is Amy Phillips. Is, she's one of those players uh, that plays domestically in an amateur league in New Zealand, so she'll pick up her fifth cap. Now, back to what you were just saying. When do you think it becomes the begins to crystallize a little bit more for the U.S. soccer fan. You know, when do we start seeing it take shape where we see players a little bit more consistency in the same roles, with the same tactical system, those types of things? At what point? Because I think we're a year away yeah, from qualifying. I think the start of next year, you start locking in. Chris is one touch away from it. I mean, she's already good. crystallized on her pool, but that pool is not just 23. You're looking at more like 30. 
Morgan. I mean, I'm looking at Morgan Bryan out there. I remember how big of a piece she was when she got inserted into the World Cup and pushed Carly Lloyd forward to help win that World Cup. And boy, she has really struggled and been hampered by a lot of injury. Yeah, and so frustrating mentally. And I've, I remember talking to her about that, feeling like you're coming back and then another setback and feeling like you're there and then another setback. And it's been one thing after another for, for Morgan Bryan. But she knows she has time as well. And that's why you got to slow that recovery down a little bit. I mean, but that's a, this is a good problem to have for Jill Ellis. When you look at all these injured players, Heath isn't in this. Rose Lavelle, we haven't even really talked about. Then we'll try to get the shot off of the goal. Wide. By the way, Carly Lloyd, the FIFA World Player of the Year, Carly not Lloyd, here tonight. Course. Yeah, I mean, that, look at look at the options, and this is exactly the situation the U.S. wants to be in. Is any team wants to be in is making it difficult to choose that final selection of 23. On to the 89th minute now. Coming up next is Sports Center. The Indians on a 22 game winning streak. Durant on a sneaker situation with Curry and Teddy Atlas previewing the big fight between Canelo and Triple G. By the way, I know some things about Canelo. <laughs> Let's hear it. Canelo was training in Rancho Santa Fe, really? California, in the hills, riding, working the roads in that hilly area in Rancho Santa Fe because my sister went out to walk her dog one morning and there's Canelo with a bunch of cars out there and a bunch of trainers doing sprints up and down the hill in front of my sister's house. Who doesn't school. know who, doesn't know who, who <laughs> Canelo is, by the way? Who is this guy I'm with like, all these people? Yeah, I'm like, he's only the, one of the most popular athletes in Mexico and in boxing. That's going to be a great fight with Triple G. Triple G undefeated. And you said... Rancho Santa Fe, I said, that has to be some sister recon there. She didn't even know who he was. <laughs> I had to explain it to her. <laughs> yeah, that 22-game streak from the Indians, by the way, was ended tonight. So let me correct myself there. Zealand. Feet goes into Kristen Press now. The ball's going to go all the way back here to Aaron Naylor. Dependable tonight, right, Julian? Go for New Zealand? Yeah, I thought she had a very solid game. Three minutes of stoppage time here. These teams will meet again on Tuesday in Cincinnati. You have to be impressed with New Zealand here tonight. There was no quit in them. And that's New Zealand every year, isn't it? You always love that about them. There's so much fight. Cross comes in towards Wilkinson again, who is a great target. And it'll be a corner here for New Zealand. We'll try and pick a second goal off here. As we're inching towards a minute into three minutes of stoppage time. It is really remarkable, 19th in the world for New Zealand and a country who, when I asked their press officer, how many registered girls do you have playing in New Zealand? He said, I don't have that number on me, but I know it's 150,000 total men, boys and girls that play. 150,000 total. It's about what we have in Orange County, I think, actually. Driven in ball towards the penalty spot. It was Wilkinson pulling away from goal as the target cleared by the U.S. And Wilkinson has scored all four of the last goals that New Zealand has scored against the United States. Morgan the target. Some hesitation, but finally getting there was Naylor. You 
might have thought that Alex Morgan might have nipped in there and won that ball. All the way back it goes to Nair. Another cross towards Wilkinson, gets a head on it. Nayer's there, didn't get the power she wanted. And she's turned out to be a real target here in the second half. And Longo doing her work in midfield, just finding a little gap, keeping it alive. And New Zealand, just the spirit of them, you've got to admire, as you mentioned, Glenn. Ali Long. He's an out wide, here's Huerta. Memorable night for Huerta. Morgan comes deep to collect it. Morgan Bryan couldn't control it. Back to Naylor goes New Zealand. And that's going to do it. It's a 3-1 win for the United States. Boyed by a pair of goals from Julie Ertz in the first half. <laughs> and there's going to be a large smile on Julie Ertz's face tonight. That is a great 90 minutes for her. And... What a two goals as we saw earlier in this game. A good win for the U.S. And an important win for the U.S. as they start this last phase of 2017. Wilkinson would get in the 79th minute. Alex Morgan would make a three for the U.S. Wilkinson getting her goal here tonight as Tony Readings and Jill Ellis congratulating each other. That's the final score. Three to one, the United States. tell you a little something about boxing the greatest moments have always been when the best fight the best pay attention history is about to repeat itself canelo versus clubkin tonight at 8 eastern 5 pacific live on pay-per-view award-winning interface Award-winning design. Award-winning engine. The Volvo XC90. The most awarded luxury SUV of the century. It is down to the wire in Major League Soccer Sunday. An important three points on the line for the New York Red Bulls. Bradley Wright Phillips and company leads New York against the Philadelphia Union at Red Bull Arena in Harrison, New Jersey. Our coverage is going to kick off at 1 p.m. Eastern on ESPN and on the ESPN app. There is your final score here in Commerce City. The United States, 3-1 winners over New Zealand. A pair of goals for Julie Ertz, Alex Morgan also. They are 3-1 winners over New Zealand on a night where Kelly O'Hara is honored with her 100th cap. The U.S. next in action against this very same New Zealand in Cincinnati. Coming up next is Sports Center. For Julie Foudy, I'm Glenn Davis. We say good night from Commerce City, Colorado.